This week, Click is in China to dance, to play, and have a smashing good time. Forget everything you've learned. China has changed. Welcome. Welcome to a country like none other. One that for so long has gone its own way, with its own ancient traditions, but which is now ready. Ready for anything. China may be thousands of years old, but it kind of feels quite young. There is an energy here, an enthusiasm to welcome the world and also show the world what it's got. And what it's got is not just factories churning out other people's stuff. The Chinese brands themselves are starting to break out. Made in China is becoming designed in China. But that buffer from a Western invasion has allowed Chinese innovation to flourish. And that's what we're here to discover. This is Click's Chinese Story, part one. Let's start with lunch, which on one day looked like this. But on other days was consumed on the go and brought to us by an army of scooter riding food angels like these. Yep, today in Beijing we're ordering a delivery from a local restaurant using WeChat, the social network of China. It's a full on multi purpose tool. Think of a mix between Twitter, WhatsApp, and Facebook. You can do business, you can have fun. Yes, China is trying to go big on innovation. It has over 1,600 accelerators, including the rather nice looking Innovation Works, founded by former head of Google China, Kai Fu Li. There's a wall here of the billion dollar projects they've backed, including May2, which has been valued at over $3 billion. Yet more than 270 million people use this selfie beautifying app every month. And for this month only, that includes me. Pretty. But they don't just have accelerators in Beijing, they have a whole startup street called InnoWay. And it has many, many, many startup cafes. Above each cafe is an incubator, and above each of those, working space for new companies, which is free for three months. And it's here that I met Gansha Wu, whose own startup, UC, is being talked about as potentially revolutionizing the autonomous car industry. More on that a bit later. In China, you know, the situation is a little bit different. When the government tries to push something, it typically gets enough attention, enough resources, enough forces. So. In China, you know, you always see you know, everyone goes in the same direction, right? It's good, it's bad, but sometimes at this point, everyone goes into this mass entrepreneurship and innovation. I think it helps. But walking around in a way, it doesn't really look like there's that much take up yet. Still, if you are really successful, you don't just get your own street, 
you get your own palace. Welcome to Deep Glint. It's led by Yong Zhao, a co-founder of Google Glass, who today has invited me to take part in this colourful demo. What is the purpose of multicolored hula hoops that we're wearing? It's, it means that we're watching everybody, we're tracking you. So we put a ring on your body, and no matter where you move, it follows you. Therefore, we understand your trajectory and your behavior. Deep Glint specializes in 3D computer vision and deep learning and uses this to make sense of how people are moving around. Well, one of our important customers, they're banks. They really wanted to understand people's behavior in their space, no matter you are a customer or you are people walking in a cash room. So, for example, in a cash room, you don't want to walk too fast, like you're running. Right. That might be mean something really bad is happening. <laughs> you see, She's, she's upset with you. You're stealing yeah. cash. Yeah. Okay. Or, <laughs> or this is, there's there's some places where they don't they don't want to get in. For example, if I.